So I've just started learning something about a technique called the takedown. That I didn't, being a woman at all, I didn't know anything about the takedown. And, uh, but lately I, I learned that term on the Claire Plane. And I started applying it to things that I've seen going on, which did not make any sense at all to me at the time. And so I thought I'd give you a few examples of, of takedowns on a grand scale that have been happening that I've only just recently found out about or that I just saw happening and I couldn't peg them at the time. Okay. Here's a takedown. Um, you know, the Catholic Church has a very sort of stern or strict standards with regard to marriage, right? And so, but however, uh, sometimes churches, and probably the Catholic Church too, are influenced by uh, a donation, you know? They're influenced to like bend the rules by a donation or like that. So, so a potential takedown might be to get a church to do something or to agree to something uh, by offering them money and that something would be against the rules of the church but the church would not ever find out about it. So it would be like a private joke for the takedown person, right? So here's, so here's an example of that. Uh, say a movie star wants to marry a transgender woman, a woman who was once a man. And uh, let's say that the church, maybe the Catholic Church or another church, is against that. It's against that particular form of marriage. It feels it's not marriage, right? So, but however, let's say that the the operation was so successful that, you know, the typical priest or nun just didn't know the difference, right? And so, and so, then the movie star uh, arranges to have, uh, say, a, a um, a marriage in the church or in the, like the chapel or like that, and uh, and without letting anybody know what's really going on, and so the what you might call the profane or the black magic or the satanic, uh, according to the beliefs of that church, is accomplished there at that church without their knowledge. It's like a curse, a black magic curse, the takedown. Ha! So there's one and. I have another one for you. Let's see if I can get it together. Okay, let's say there's there's someone that you really don't like, and they have their close friends with a person who is a Jewish person, a very upstanding, socially acceptable, just very proper um, Jewish person professional guy, right? And so you want to take down this one guy, but you're afraid of him, right? But instead, what you're going to do is you're going to, you're going to stick the knife in sideways, you know? Stick the knife in sideways by taking down the friend. And with any luck, the first guy, who you're pretending to be friends with, would never know it. And so, and so the takedown is once again like anonymous and safe and also unknown to the person that's being taken, actually two people are being taken down. All right, so let's say you're an adept at mind control and also you, you finagle access to the residence of person number two and, and, um, and uh, you, you in put drugs into their, say, water filter so that when they pour water in, the, the fresh water that they drink is drugged by some kind of like hallucinogen or something like that. And so they drink it and then you know that they drink it because you're shy, you know, and so they, they um, so then you call them up and they're like, what do they call it? Um, in, in, not inductible, but uh, you're susceptible to mind control because you're under the influence of a mind altering agent or like that chemical, right? So, so they call you and that establishes a physical connection in addition to the astral connection, which is mind control, right? So they call you and they say, look, um, I'd like to interview you, um, uh, I, but it should be in disguise and this is about a topic that's not like on your regular 
stuff what you do and like that and so you need to be disguised so then they suggest or like mentally induce you to to wear some kind of disguise right like a different kind of clothes or a different kind of hat or a different kind of you know maybe wear a mustache or something like that. they think of something and um and they say, and in addition, on the video that we're about to do using, say, you know, the computer phone, like that, we're going to do a video about a really interesting, important topic. It'll be a topic this person doesn't know anything about, right? <laughs> and, and that way you can, you can expand your area of influence in the world in a way that you never could in a very straight line, you know, situation. And so... Being in a uh, hypnotizable um, state, this person says, oh, yeah, sure. It sounds like a good idea. And then you get this, this person, the takedown artist, gets a video of, of the other person and introduces him, say, as a, uh, as a, um, a Muslim. Let's say he introduces him as a Muslim who has a profession totally different from his true life profession. So he has it on tape and he puts it on you know, the video on the internet, and then uh, nobody knows because the person is disguised. Nobody knows that this has happened, but, but in fact, he has taken down the friend of the person he wanted to take down and the person as well. It's another form of black magic curse, the takedown, and it has to do with mind control, which is something that's often to do with soul wounding, as I've discussed many, many times in the past, and, uh, and also can be enhanced by uh, drugs, you know, it has to do with uh, being susceptible to the demon realm sometimes, and, and so forth. And so it's, it's not a state, uh, when it's used negatively, that is, it's not a state that we want to get into because it creates further soul wounding. Of course, God-given sigh is something completely different. Um, so now let's see this plan is in place and the person in question will not agree to it. Person number two will not agree to it. Then then what can be done is to find someone who's a lookalike, an actor or like that, and get that person to do that role uh, and put the video online. And still it's a takedown without either person two or person one having participated in it. That's a second possibility. Okay, here's the third takedown. Uh, let's say that, that two people get into an argument. The first person is the one you, that, the, that the takedown artist wants to take down. Because this person is shy, he knows like all the little foibles of everybody, he knows there's an argument going on and there's like a weak link, a weak link of like holding a grudge or anger or something like that in person number two. Okay, so he can get at person number one by exploiting the weakness uh, in like the Sam's care of person number two. So, so being a mind control guy, right? He gets, he knows about this person, can find out about their, uh, their phone number, for instance, just to ask, right? Over the psychic plane. He finds their phone number, gives him a call. He goes, I have a great idea of a way you can get back at person number one. There's, you can put up a website anonymously. I can help you create it. You provide the ideas, right? I can help you create it. And, and it, this website will, will make fun of the person that you're mad at. Okay? So, so person number two says, well, how much is it going to cost? And the price is right. So, so he sends the ideas to the takedown artist. And the takedown artist... Uh, in, in addition to the ideas of this person as to what would be like ridiculing or, or a takedown for person number one, puts in satanic elements, uh, witchcraft, uh, curses, curses for person number two and all his family, person for, curses for person number one, curses in general for all the people he considers to be not like him, you know, just... It's full of witchcraft. 
and uh, satanic symbols and things of that nature. Person number two is an innocent. He doesn't know anything about satanic rituals, satanic rites, rit um, uh, curses, uh, spells. He just doesn't know anything. He just thinks he's, he's getting even. He feels bad. He, he wants to, you know, express his anger. And so, and so person number one does not know about this website. And person number two does not know about the satanic element. And the takedown artist has taken down both people. You see? It's, it's, really, it's really an interesting process. It's, uh, it indicates in the takedown artist a certain kind of soul wounding that, uh, that I'm not familiar with, actually. Uh, something like a vicious viciousness in a way, uh, a desire to to wreak havoc or vengeance, uh, a desire to, you know, I envision it on the psychic plane as, as a, a curved dagger, a curved dagger that's in, I mean, it's wavy, a wavy dagger. I, there may have been such a dagger at one time. The intention might have been in the ancient days to inflict more um, more injury than a straight-edged knife during a battle. And I would be willing to bet that this takedown artist person experienced a lifetime in which he owned such a weapon. Because on the psychic plane, I see him using that and inserting it into under the ribs into the ab abdominal area of people to get even with them. On the left-hand side, be about two inches below the ribs, and then turning it and twisting it to create more damage in the physical form. Of course, this is merely an astral visualization, um, uh, but it does cause like to, when, if it were to happen to me, I would feel pain in that area until I was able to equalize the energy in that area. You know what I mean? Creates a, a kind of a psychic pain. Um, temporary. Uh, and so in conclusion I would like to say that in a situation like that with the curvy dagger and the feeling of uh, you know like a vindictive feeling of really wanting to stick it to them like that you know that um, that when that lifetime clears that lifetime in which the person owned the curvy dagger I think as a woman and uh, killed a, a lover or a husband or a person in a harem that owned the harem and that forced them to their will, something of that nature, uh, with that dagger, um, when that first um, incident clears, that all this other stuff, this need to do all of that, will also go by the wayside. I think it will completely clear up. And not only that, but for that person and all other energies like that all over Earth will probably be clearing in an instant with one of the waves of incoming light altogether. Okay, here's the third takedown. Uh, let's say that, that two people get into an argument. The first person is the one you, that, the, that the takedown artist wants to take down. And the second person, because this person is shy, he knows like all the little foibles of everybody, he knows there's an argument going on and there's like a weak link, a weak link of like holding a grudge or anger or something like that in person number two, okay? So he can get at person number one by exploiting the weakness uh, in like the samskara of person number two. So, so being a mind control guy, right? He gets, he knows about this person, can find out about their, uh, their phone number, for instance, just ask, right? Over the psychic plane, he finds their phone number, gives him a call, he goes, I have a great idea of a way you can get back at person number one. There's, you can put up a website anonymously. I can help you create it. You provide the ideas, right? I can help you create it. And, and it, this website will, will make fun of the person that you're mad at. Okay? So, so person number two says, well, how much is it going to cost? And the price is right. So 
So he sends the ideas to the takedown artist, and the takedown artist, uh, in, in addition to the ideas of this person as to what would be like ridiculing or, or a takedown for person number one, puts in satanic elements, uh, witchcraft, uh, curses, curses for person number two and all his family, person for curses for person number one, curses in general for all the people he considers to be not like him, you know, just it's full of witchcraft and uh, satanic symbols and things of that nature. Person number two is an innocent, he doesn't know anything about satanic rituals, satanic rites, rit um, uh, curses, uh, spells. He just doesn't know anything. He just thinks he's, he's getting even. He feels bad. He, he wants to, you know, express his anger. And so, and so person number one does not know about this website. And person number two does not know about the satanic element. And the takedown artist has taken down both people. You see? It's, it's really it's really an interesting process. It's, uh, it indicates in the takedown artist a certain kind of soul wounding that, uh, that I'm not familiar with actually. Uh, something like a vicious viciousness in a way, uh, a desire to, to wreak havoc or vengeance, uh, a desire to, you know, I envision it on the psychic plane as as a, a curved dagger, a curved dagger that's in. I mean, it's wavy, a wavy dagger. I, there may have been such a dagger at one time. The intention might have been in the ancient days to inflict more um, more injury than a straight-edged knife during a battle. And I would be willing to bet that this takedown artist person experienced a lifetime in which he owned such a weapon because on the psychic plane I see him using that and inserting it into under the ribs into the ab abdominal area of people to get even with them on the left hand side be about two inches below the ribs and then turning it and twisting it to create more damage in the physical form of course this is merely an astral visualization um, uh, but it does cause, like, to, when if it were to happen to me, I would feel pain in that area until I was able to equalize the energy in that area. You know what I mean? Creates a, a kind of a psychic pain, um, temporary. Uh, and so, in conclusion, I would like to say that in a situation like that, with the curvy dagger and the feeling of, uh, you know, like a vindictive feeling of really wanting to stick it to them <sighs> like that you know that um that when that lifetime clears that lifetime in which the person owned the curvy dagger i think is a woman and uh a killed a, a lover or a husband or a person in a harem that owned the harem and that forced them to their will something of that nature uh with that dagger um when that first um, incident clears, that all this other stuff, this need to do all of that, will also go by the wayside. I think it will completely clear up. And not only that, but for that person and all other energies like that all over Earth will probably be clearing in an instant with one of the waves of incoming light altogether. All right, here's another curse, uh, the curse of the social gaffe. You could also call it the curse of the taboo. If by mind control a takedown artist gets another person to break a social taboo and then records it and puts it online, then that is a... a takedown that involves a curse by those members of society that hold dear that taboo. Here are examples. The man to be taken down 
is mind controlled into cross-dressing. Then that's recorded online or a bunch of people see it. Or here's another one. A modest woman is mind controlled to pose nude or perform a sex act in the buff and this is placed online or a lot of people see it. In the latter case, the mind control lure might be that it will bring in money for a social cause dear to the woman. There are endless variations on this theme of the curse of the social gaffe. 